Christ is risen. Christos anesti. Christos vos crece. El msich com. Ha mashiach com. Christus resurrexit. Christo ha resucitado. Christos anviat. Christi unyao. Arisutos tu fukatsu. Si du fuchola. Christo boaha shene. First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 37, through chapter 19, verse 19. So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren, to minister before the Ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obed-Edom, with their brethren, three score and eight. Obed-Edom also, the son of Jedathan, and Hosea to be porters. And Zadok the priest, and his brethren the priests, before the tabernacle of the Lord, in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offering continually, morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. And with them Heman and Jedathan, and the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name, to give thanks to the Lord, because his mercy endureth forever. And with them Heman and Jedathun, with trumpets and cymbals, for those that should make a sound, and with musical instruments of God, and the sons of Jedathun were porters. And all the people departed every man to his house, and David returned to bless his house. Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in, for I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me a house of cedars? Now therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee a house. And it shall come to pass, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before the Lord, and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is mine house, that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all this greatness, in making known all these great things. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And when one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness, by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, Lord, becamest their God. Therefore, now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning this house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel. And let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. For thou, O my God, hast told thy servant that thou wilt build him a house. Therefore thy servant hath found in his heart to pray before thee. And now, Lord, thou art God, and hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. 
Now therefore, let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be before thee forever. For thou blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. Now after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines, and subdued them, and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants, and brought gifts. And David smote Hadarezer, the king of Zobah, unto Hamath, and as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots, and seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. David also hawked all the chariot horses, but reserved of them a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadarezer, king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants, and brought gifts. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were of the servants of Hadarezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. Likewise from Tibhath and from Kun, cities of Hadarezer, brought David very much brass. Wherewith Solomon made the brazen sea, and the pillars, and the vessels of brass. Now when Tohu, king of Hamath, heard how David had smitten all the host of Hadarezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadoram, his son, to King David, to inquire of his welfare, and to congratulate him, because he had fought against Hadarezer and smitten him, for Hadarezer had war with Tohu, and with him all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass. Them also King David dedicated unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations, from Edom and from Moab, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, and from Amalek. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, slew of the Edomites in the valley of Salt, 18,000. He put garrisons in Edom, and all Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and executed judgment and justice among all his people. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the host, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, recorder and Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Abimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests, and Shavshah was scribe. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Carathites and the Pelathites, and the sons of David were chief about the king. Now it came to pass after this that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, died, and his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will show kindness unto Hanun, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. And David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. So the servants of David came into the land of the children of Ammon to Hanun to comfort him. But the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanun, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Are not his servants come unto thee for to search, and to overthrow, and to spy out the land? Wherefore Hanun took David's servants, and shaved them, and cut off their garments in the midst hard by their buttocks, and sent them away. Then there went certain, and told David how the men were served. And he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they had made themselves odious to David, Hanan and the children of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia, and out of Syria, Maacah, and out of Zobah. So they hired thirty and two thousand chariots in the king of Maaca and his people, who came and pitched before Medeba. And the children of Ammon gathered themselves together from their cities and came to battle. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array before the gate of the city, and the kings that were come were by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him before and behind, he chose out of all the choice of Israel, and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered unto the hand of Abishai his brother. And they set themselves in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. Be of good courage, and let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people, and for the cities of our God. And let the Lord do that which is good in his sight. So Joab and the people that were with him drew nigh before the Syrians unto the battle, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, they likewise fled before Abishai, his brother, and entered into the city. And Joab came to Jerusalem. 
And when the Syrians saw that they were put to the worse before Israel, they sent messengers and drew forth the Syrians that were beyond the river. And Shophak, the captain of the host of Hadarezer, went before them. And it was told David, and he gathered all Israel, and passed over Jordan, and came upon them, and set the battle in array against them. So when David had put the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with him. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand men which fought in chariots, and forty thousand footmen, and killed at Shophak the captain of the host. And when the servants of Hadarezer saw that they were put to the worst before Israel, they made peace with David, and became his servants. Neither would the Syrians help the children of Ammon any more. Psalm 150 Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Proverbs chapter 26, verses 21 through 28. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Second Maccabees chapter 3 Now when the holy city was inhabited with all peace, and the laws were kept very well, because of the godliness of Onias the high priest, and his hatred of wickedness, it came to pass that even kings themselves did honor the place, and magnify the temple with their best gifts, insomuch that Seleucus, king of Asia, of his own revenues, bare all the costs belonging to the service of the sacrifices. But one Simon of the tribe of Benjamin, who was made governor of the temple, fell out with the high priest about disorder in the city. And when he could not overcome Onias, he gat him to Apollonius, the son of Thrasias, who was then governor of Celesyria and Phoenice, and told him that the treasury in Jerusalem was full of infinite sums of money, so that the multitude of their riches, which did not pertain to the account of the sacrifices, was innumerable, and that it was possible to bring all into the king's hand. Now when Apollonius came to the king, and had showed him of the money whereof he was told, the king chose out Heliodorus his treasurer, and sent him with a commandment to bring him before said money. So forthwith Heliodorus took his journey under a color of visiting the cities of Celesyria and Phoenice, but indeed to fulfill the king's purpose. And when he was come to Jerusalem, and had been courteously received of the high priest of the city, he told him what intelligence was given of the money, and declared wherefore he came, and asked if these things were so indeed. Then the high priest told him that there was such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children, and that some of it belonged to Hyrcanus, son of Tobias, a man of great dignity, and not as that wicked Simon had misinformed. The sum whereof in all was four hundred talents of silver and two hundred of gold, and that it was altogether impossible that such wrongs should be done unto them that had committed it to the holiness of the place, and to the majesty and inviolable sanctity of the temple, honored all over the world. But Heliodorus, because of the king's commandment given him, said, that in any wise it must be brought into the king's treasury. So at the day which he appointed, he entered in to order this matter. Wherefore, there was no small agony throughout the whole city. But the priests, prostrating themselves before the altar in their priest's vestments, called unto heaven upon him that made a law concerning things given to be kept, that they should safely be preserved for such as had committed them to be kept. Then whoso had looked the high priest in the face, it would have wounded his heart, for his countenance and the changing of his color declared the inward agony of his mind. For the man was so compassed with fear and horror of the body, that it was manifest to them that looked upon him what sorrow he had now in his heart. Others ran flocking out of their houses to the general supplication, because the place was like to come into contempt. And the women girt with sackcloth under their breasts, abounded in the streets, and the virgins that were kept in ran, some to the gates, and some to the walls, and others looked out the windows. And all, holding their hands toward heaven, made supplication. Then it would have pitied a man to see the falling down of the multitude of all sorts, and the fear of the high priest being in such an agony. 
They then called upon the Almighty Lord to keep the things committed of trust safe and sure for those that had committed them. Nevertheless, Cleodorus executed that which was decreed. Now, as he was there, present himself with his guard about his treasury, the Lord of the Spirits, and the Prince of all power, caused a great apparition, so that all presumed to come in with him were astonished at the power of God, and fainted, and were sore afraid. For there appeared unto them a horse with a terrible rider upon him, and adorned with a very great covering, and he ran fiercely, and smote at Heliodorus with his forefeet, and it seemed that he that sat upon the horse had complete harness of gold. Moreover, two other young men appeared before him, notable in strength, excellent in beauty, and comely in apparel, who stood by him on either side, and scourged him continually, and gave him many sore stripes. And Heliodorus fell suddenly unto the ground, and was compassed with great darkness, but they that were with him took him up, and put him into a litter. Thus him, that lately came with a great train, and with all his guard, into the said treasury, they carried out, being unable to help himself with his weapons, and manifestly they acknowledged the power of God. For he by the hand of God was cast down, and lay speechless without all hope of life. For they praised the Lord that had miraculously honored his own place. For the temple, which a little afore was full of fear and trouble, when the Almighty Lord appeared, was filled with joy and gladness. And straightway, certain of Heliodorus's friends prayed Onias that he would call upon the Most High to grant him his life, who lay ready to give up the ghost. So the high priest, suspecting lest the king should misconceive that some treachery had been done to Heliodorus by the Jews, offered a sacrifice for the health of the man. Now as the high priest was making an atonement, the same young men in the same clothing appeared and stood beside Heliodorus, saying, Give Onias the high priest great thanks, insomuch as for his sake the Lord hath granted thee life. And seeing that thou hast been scourged from heaven, declare unto all men the mighty power of God. And when they had spoken these words, they appeared no more. So Heliodorus, after he had offered sacrifice unto the Lord, and made great vows unto him that saved his life, and saluted Onias, returned with his host to the king. Then testified he to all men the works of the great God, which he had seen with his eyes. And when the king asked Heliodorus, who might be a fit man to be sent yet once again to Jerusalem, he said, If thou hast any enemy or traitor, send him thither, and thou shalt receive him well scourge, if he escape with his life, for in that place, no doubt, there is an especial power of God. For he that dwelleth in heaven hath his eye on that place, and defendeth it, and he beateth and destroyeth them that come to hurt it. The things concerning Heliodorus, and the keeping of the treasury, fell out on this sort.